go with the flow. I'm sure you've heard the saying before, probably in many different contexts. This idea of go with the flow or swimming against the current. One of my very favorite and very meaningful songs is called Flow by Sean James. There's a version of YouTube on YouTube where he talks about this idea of going with the flow and making music and following his heart and doing something that he really loves. And then the idea of swimming, swimming against the current, following this life of financial uh, lucrativeness and financial freedom. And he talks about the struggle between these two of going with the flow and swimming upstream. Good morning. This is Mental Fortress Mondays. And this morning on Mental Fortress Monday, we're going to talk about going with the flow in maybe a little bit of a different way. Here on Mental Fortress Mondays, we explore the who, what, where, when, why, and how of mindfulness and mindfulness-based practices and all of the things that we can do to improve our mental resilience, especially during times of high stress and feeling overwhelmed. So this idea of going with the flow obviously is not new. And it comes up in multiple different contexts. And for me, it has come up several times in the last month. And so I thought it was an important time to share it with you. So what does this actually mean? And what does it mean in your life? The idea of swimming against the current or going with the flow. Can you actually embrace it? And are you actually embracing it to its full extent? There can be different interpretations of what this actually means. And it, the idea of us swimming upstream and against the current is just when life gets really, really hard and when it ends up, maybe the current is actually leading you in a particular way or the framework and the structures around your life and all of these things are actually leading you in a particular way in your life. And we can either fight against that and try to make other choices that will continuously take us out of it, or we can sort of give in as the wrong word, but we can go with the current and sort of see where it will lead us on a little bit of this adventure. So the idea of battling and fighting against it, what feels a little bit more natural to the constructs and to the framework and to the things that are happening within your life to sort of shuttle you in a particular pathway. So, and what seems more right or what might feel more right, not that it's gonna be easy, often it's difficult and often there's lots of change that is incorporated into that. If you're even thinking of that idea of being in a river and being shuttled down through this current, you're going to see a different environment continuously as you move through. And this whole idea of all of that change happening at once can be really hard and can be really scary. So not to mistake this idea of going with the flow for anything easy, because it very well may not be. Change is inevitable, especially in those circumstances, and that can often be hard. Let's imagine that there is flow and this is happening in your life. So this rushing river has picked you up, it's controlling your circumstances, your life, whatever it is. It's controlling kind of the way that we're going to navigate what your job or, or what your uh, what your life's going to look like, not, your, not necessarily just your career. And you may be able to control or change the circumstances at a time, or maybe you're waiting for something or, you know, whatever it is, maybe the boss is making a decision for something, doesn't matter, but you're waiting for these circumstances and the moment, maybe you can do something about that, but, but for the time being and these particular moments, you can't actually change anything. And maybe it's also related to your health. So at this particular time, maybe you're working towards that change, but at this particular time, you can't change those exact circumstances that you're in. And then so every moment and every day we have options of how we can respond because we can't change that flow and that current that is pushing us and driving us in a particular direction, but we can change our response. So let's say we're going to be taken down the river by this current and the options that we have to respond are we can be swept away and be angry and resentful 
of the whole situation. We can navigate knowing our boundaries and still having a bad attitude. And we can learn as many lessons on the way as possible and come out feeling empowered and uh, benefited even from these so-called difficult or adverse effects. So let's dive into these options with a little bit more detail. So picture, if you will, this river comes along, scoops you up, this tide sweeps you down into the river and you're going off into a place you have absolutely no idea. Maybe there's a waterfall or maybe there's whatever else is gonna be on the other side and it can be really, really scary not knowing exactly where you're going. So in your choose your own adventure, imagine that you decide to go with the current because you know you can't beat this tsunami that just swept you away. It's your first time in the river, and so you're flailing and pretty scared. If you're trying to keep your head above water, you're trying just long enough to take a breath and then it might scoop you underneath. Maybe you're gasping for air. Your hands are maybe outstretched to try and stop your skull from smashing against all of the rocks. And you make it to the end to a peaceful enough part within the river that you can climb out. But whoa, that was not fun. That was rough. Maybe you're cursing under your breath the whole way through. And you really don't ever want to do that again. And it creates a sense of fear of water or fear of the rivers even stronger within you. And every time you think back to this memory, it makes you a little bit angry, super anxious, and very fearful. All of these other sort of heated emotions that can come along with it are not just for the moment. They're going to be ingrained in that moment and in your memory because you've created it in some way. So every time you think back to it, it's going to invoke those emotions again. And think of scenario number two. Imagine maybe you've had other experiences that you've actually kind of love water. You checked into the river. You know what it's like to body surf in the ocean, especially if you live on the East Coast. And it, but it's your first time in this river and in this tsunami. So you take some breaths and you are going to head beneath the surface at multiple times and it's not fun and you don't like it, but you know it's gonna happen. So you take breaths every time you can and it's sort of part of the game. And you easily can stay underwater if you need to for a few extra seconds without full on panicking because you know you'll resurface again. You sort of know the patterns of the ocean in that way. And you know that your body can always handle more than you think it can. So whatever it is, whether you're trying to power through something, whether you're holding your breath underwater, your body can always, in reality, not just in our analogy, do more than you think it can. It's our mind that gives up first. So for a few extra seconds, you hold your breath and then you maybe even make a record for yourself of holding your breath that long. Maybe you even make it a little bit of a game of I'm just going to see if I can hold my breath for that much longer. You count the seconds and you realize that there's a little bit of an accomplishment in that every time you hold your breath for a little bit longer. And with each tumble and dip underwater, you see how long it takes for you to resurface. You bang your head a few times maybe, but you know that it's sort of part of the sport. Chalk it up to part of the game. And when you come out on the other side, the memory is a little bit scary. Definitely maybe some, a little bit of anxiety within that, but overall you actually feel like you accomplished something and you realize that you could hold your breath for longer than you could have before. And maybe there's some light within that, but you certainly still don't really want to do it again. And then there's a third option. Imagine again, Maybe you love water, maybe you don't. But you're willing to take on this whole idea because you know people who kayak in the ocean or you've always wanted to try surfing. 
maybe you've done it dozens of times even and you have a little bit of that experience. No helmet this time as you might wear in the ocean on a regular basis if you're doing this or down rivers if you're kayaking down rivers, but you decide to really hone in, be super present, and you're going to just navigate all of these rocks and curves and whatever it is maybe with ease or maybe it's still your first time and it, it's not super easy but you're trying to learn as much as you can over through through the process maybe once in a while you actually even skip taking a breath when your head surfaces just to push yourself a little bit more and just to see if you can do it and when you come out at the other end maybe that adrenaline rush was a little bit much maybe you want to try it again Maybe you're even looking over to see if there's another river for a chance for you to jump in again. And you might be surprised at how much you learned over that time and how well you navigated through those situations. But it's about the perspective in the moment and about this idea of wanting to see how much you could get out of it. This idea of wanting to learn that can really fully change the process. And one of the most important pieces is that when we reflect back on it, the emotions that we are in the moment and the emotions that we create after the experience are going to be the ones that are invoked every time we think of this event. And those are the parts that can uplift us or can keep us sort of overwhelmed and in this state of of overwhelming anxiety and just feeling like that things are a little harder. It doesn't even have to be that they're harder in the moment. It can be that they are actually just seem harder because of all of the past events that we are remembering and how we have framed those in our mind. You might be surprised to learn that very likely you've done all of these in your life. I certainly have. And when we learn something new, we can always feel like we're being dragged down the river or dragged down the stream in some way. And we can either choose to swim upstream or choose to go with the flow. Often this will happen when there's changes in our lives, when relationships are formed or ended, when there is possibly a new job in line, when whatever constructs around your life are being changed and there's some very big drastic changes. We can either choose to try and hold on to the things that are changing, which is us swimming upstream, or we can choose to go with the current, knowing the change is going to happen, embracing it a little bit and really seeing it almost as an adventure if you want to reframe your perspective and see where this river is going to take you. Because if it's going to change anyway, we can navigate that in a bit of a better way so that it causes us less stress so that we have less overwhelm. So how does the idea of this relate to our ability to mentally process and what challenges are we going to experience so that and, and and what things can we do so that we end up having more resilience through all of these different types of challenges? Typically, the challenge is the change. We don't like change. We don't like to know, to not know where we're going or to not be able to see exactly how to get there. If we've done it before, it's not a big deal. The first time you learn how to drive a car, I'm sure you were a little more nervous than the times that you're doing it now. Almost second nature to you. The first times we do anything can always be a little bit more difficult and a little bit more scary. Can we learn how to deal with change the first time? Well, we can. And we need to figure out how to get that emotional resilience to the idea of the unknown. Often the things that will help is knowing your boundaries and knowing your limits and the attitude of accepting change or these challenges very gracefully can make all the world of a difference. 
take for example something else if we're leaning a little bit more on our limits and know that we can do particular things in a particular within a particular construct of our limits or we know our limits then wherever the river takes us we can feel a little bit more confident that we actually have control so knowing our boundaries and staying within them being able to say no or to navigate that and keep yourself within those limits can be very empowering so let me give you an example of that let's say someone else is making dinner for you and your limits that you tell them are no brussels sprouts i actually love brussels sprouts but whatever no brussels sprouts the classic example because apparently many people don't like them and you get green beans but what you really wanted was okra carrots whatever else you can eat them gracefully and enjoy it, knowing that your limits were no Brussels sprouts, but what you really wanted was green beans, even if that wasn't communicated, or what you thought you were getting, what you thought you were getting, what you kind of wanted was green beans. So there are ways that we can accept this. If we've heard of different classic examples, I'm sure you could picture someone getting very angry and saying, this isn't what I wanted, you know, throwing their food, if you're gonna be extreme, chucking the plate across the table, whatever it is, be like, this isn't dinner, what is this? This isn't what, you know, I was prepared for. You can eat them begrudgingly, being like, well, this isn't really what I had the taste for, whatever, fine, I'll take it. And every time you think back to that dinner or the whole time that you're eating, you're sort of eating this annoyance or frustration or anger or whatever it is or you can take the perspective of my limits were brussels sprouts this isn't what i thought i was gonna get but it's not brussels sprouts and within my limits i am a hundred percent willing to accept this with joy and grace and you give a ton of gratitude for your food and the whole time you're eating this gratitude that someone else prepared this meal for you We might even know people that make all of those different decisions or have all those different reactions to things like that. Maybe it's not food, maybe it's other things in their lives, but I'm sure we can all relate to some extent. And all of those are choices. Those choices often are made depending on how stressed we are and our whole experience of our day leading up until that point. And that's where all of our other choices and our ability to even be mindful and present throughout the day or even within those moments can make such a huge difference for how we're going to react and what memories we're gonna create to go forward with, which will affect our overall sense of stress and overwhelm the relationships that we're creating or undoing by throwing food in people's faces, all of the things that contribute to our ability to be resilient to the levels of stress that we're carrying and creating and holding on to, and to that sense of being overwhelmed. We may need to prepare ourselves then in any circumstances where we feel like you are taking, being taken down by the river. We may need to prepare for the idea of these consequences creating a framework and for those consequences to be whatever we are expecting or not expecting. And the control that we can provide is when we set our limits. And when we say, okay, these are the things that I am not willing to compromise or that I don't want to change. And when everything else changes, that part needs to be a little bit more okay. So this could happen with a new job. It could happen with a new relationship. Really so many different circumstances in our lives that we can learn to be okay with these different circumstances and with change and then learn to be okay with the outcome even when it's not what we expected. And how does this look then if we're gonna go with the flow in this case because our circumstances are changing? And what aspects of mental health and mental resilience can help us to prepare? Getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, 
of one of my favorite phrases because it is so true in so many different circumstances. And you know, we know that we can make different choices and that we can control our boundaries and set limits. And then we need to decide what the consequences of those are going to be when those different choices are presented to us. And know that you cannot control the outcomes. We can only control our choices and our limits and what we are willing to do in terms of our behavior. And we can be prepared for the unknown and get comfortable with that change and the idea of not getting what you want and not getting what you expected. And how do we do all of those above things? Sometimes just with acknowledgement and understanding and appreciation that we're not going to get those things and we can sort of learn to accept and be okay with those. Setting our boundaries and our limits and knowing those can be really important. Also appreciating that they can change. Something new might come up in those circumstances and all of a sudden it's like, okay, no, like I'm not willing to give that up or okay, well, I'm willing to hold this boundary and give that up or whatever it is. They're allowed to be flexible, but knowing what they are in the moment can really help to make choices and to go forward in a confident, empowered way. Check your perspective. Through our examples, are you deciding maybe throughout the whole event or being pulled through that uh, current was scary and it you're christening yourself at yourself the whole time or at the world or whatever it was at the river maybe and then you get to the end of it what is that choice of how you're going to frame the experience that you just had and what perspective are you going to take are you more of a victim do you are you willing to take on that challenge or can you even feel like a warrior and I made it through and I'm going to do this and I'm going to sit down just for a moment and think of all of those instances where I was able to get my head above water, like you made it. Or even if you don't make it the whole way and you end up getting, I don't know, stuck on a rock in the middle of the, of the river or whatever it is, you made it that far. And there are different ways and different perspectives to actually acknowledge your successes. We don't celebrate those very often and they really should be. And then figuring out how to be okay with change. And as many of you know, one of the ways that I have developed this ability to be okay with change and what other people, how other people may also learn this is through mindfulness. We get comfortable with being in the uncomfortable. And when we have change and difficult things that come up, and we can be okay with that unexpected, okay with those things that we didn't like or didn't want or just because it's new or different we can actually be okay with them and so I invite you to our practice this morning and we're going to sit in a mental practice this is the the idea of what we're practicing is our mental focus of neutrality of not reacting to situations or to things that come up in our mind and in our body. So we sit, and when I say we sit, it means we're going to do a mindful practice, and we practice being completely, completely neutral with anything that arises. And we can do that better in a neutral stance first so that when we are faced with a river or whatever it is and this whole environment is changing around us, we actually have the ability to do this in those adverse consequences or circumstances. So if you have the time and if you can make the time, wonderful. If you can't, come back to this later. And so I invite you to sit mindfully. Close your eyes if you get the chance, or you have the opportunity without chaos around you. If you can sit on the ground, I invite you to do that. If you want to sit on a chair, that's totally fine. And just pay attention to your breath. Paying attention to the air moving in and out of your nostrils. 
And the focus of our mind and what that practice is, is just bringing us into the moment and noticing how your breath moves in and out of your nose. And when your mind wanders to whatever thoughts happen, you bring them back again. And we just try and stay neutral in our thought process of all of these things that are happening constantly. That means no judgment. That means no labeling of whatever it is that we think are is, is related to the circumstances. We just bring our mind back and we let it, our response to anything that comes up, be neutral without reactivity, without placing meaning or ideas or whatever it is on this particular thing that we're paying attention to, which for the moment is our breath. And you may notice even just with paying attention to your breath, your whole nervous system just kind of relaxes a little bit. A great benefit but not the only thing that we can have happen during this time. And when you're ready, bring your attention to the top of your head and allow your awareness to just melt over your head and your face. Just really paying attention to your body and trying to see if you can feel anything, anything at all. It doesn't have to be something spectacular and we're not looking for anything special. Just seeing if you can feel a particular sensation. Maybe it's a coolness, maybe it's a tickle, maybe it's warmth, maybe it's a little bit of a breeze if you have a fan going or something blowing against your skin. And if you notice that sensation, just pay attention to it. And one of the ways of being able to pay attention without placing any of these judgments on it and keeping our neutrality is by exploring it with curiosity. So with that particular sensation, would it have a, what color would it be if it had a color? What texture would it be if it had a texture? How big are the boundaries of that particular sensation? And maybe the sensation, if it is that wind, just happens too fast and you don't get to pinpoint it. That's okay. Just move on to the next thing. Our goal isn't to necessarily stay in one place. If you feel that sensation, you can move on. We don't have to stay and explore it. If you're having difficulty with this, it helps to bring our mind into that focus and it helps to let go of any of the other judgments that we might have around it. And just continue to move your awareness down your body. Again, we practice this in this neutral stance so that we have this pathway ingrained in us and we know the route for this particular way of controlling and calming our mind. And this particular way of experiencing something uncomfortable. So that when those come up in the rest of our lives, we already know this pathway. We already have our brain functioning down these little neuron roots in order to bring this particular experience into that situation as well, which is being able to be neutral, non-reactive, being centered and grounded, and having responses then that we can be a little bit more confident in and that we can hold our boundaries better in. All of those different things to help keep us grounded, decrease stress, and decrease the overwhelm that we're experiencing. And just continue to move your awareness down your body to different areas, just noting any sensations that come up 
Again, you can stay and explore those with a neutral mind, or you can acknowledge that they're there, see what it's about, and then move on. Scanning the rest of your body. Moving then, if we move down your chest and your abdomen, down into your pelvis. Maybe you do both legs at one time or maybe just one leg at one time. And whenever you're done, you can open your eyes again if they were closed. Stretch out your fingers and toes. Thank you so much for joining me here on Mental Fortress Mondays. If you guys have some flow that you're fighting against these days, I'd love to hear about it. You can leave me a message or you can private message me. Have an amazing day. I hope you're able to join the mindfulness meditation and set yourself up for success today and the rest of the week. See you soon.